So I'm doing my presentation on hypothyroidism, and you guys will kind of see why halfway into the slide this is kind of important to me. So hypothyroidism, hypo means low, so it's when you have a low production of your thyroid levels. So your thyroid normally produces uh, hormones of T3 and T4, and your normal T4 levels are from 1.5 to 3 micrograms per deciliter. And what these hormones do is they regulate the me metabolic rate. Um, so when you have an impaired production of this, it's normally in your T4 hormone. Um, it's really common in dogs, but it's actually rare in cats, and it normally happens from the age 4 to 10 um, in mid to large size dogs. So there are certain breeds that are more commonly affected than others, and these are things such as like golden retrievers, Doberman pinchers, Irish shedders, uh, miniature schnauzers, Dutch hounds, Cocker Spaniels and Airedale Terriers, um, and then your German Shepherds and your mixed breeds are actually at a reduced risk. Um, and spayed females and castrated males are at higher risks than um, intact. So what you normally have is primary hypothyroidism, and this is when the animal's immune system actually attacks the thyroid. Um, and this is where 95% of hypothyroidism comes from. The other type is congenital, and this is just inherited and it's really rare. Um, it's normally found in fox terriers. So there are four tests you can do, and they're all blood tests, and that's how you diagnose it. Um, so you have your baseline T4 test, which is your mo co most common. You have a T3 test, a free T4 by equilibrium dialysis, and a TA TSH level. Um, and those are your four. And the symptoms of it, there's quite a bit. So you have lethargy, unwillingness or inability to exercise, and because of this you have a muscle weakness and shrink shrinkage. Um, you have weight gain without an increase in appetite. Um, the animal also can't man maintain their own body heat, so they'll seek out warm shelters. Uh, you also have dwarfism and impaired mental development, but that only happens if it has this thyroid problem during, like, it's a baby. That's when this happens. Um, and you also have changes in skin. And when I say changes in skin, so you have things such as dryness, excessive shedding, delayed regrowth, hair thinning, hair loss, and you have an increased pigmentation in those areas, and not only an increased pigmentation there, but you also have it in points of wear, so around their forehead and their face, which can cause that puffy appearance. So this right here is a change in the skin, and then this right here is the quote-unquote tragic face that it has, and you can see kind of like the red uh, eyes and around the nostrils. Um, you can also have low heart rate and arteries hardening, uh, breathing problems, and then reproductive problems. So when you have reproduction problems, it causes infertility and a failure of heat cycles. So the treatments for this are you can really only increase and replace that thyroid hormone. So thyroxine is the most common. It's replacing T4. And it comes in 0.1 milligrams to 1 milligrams. And in order for you to see any change in the animal's coat and weight, it has to be on this for 4 to 8 weeks. And it's a lifelong treatment. And that's a pill, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thyroxine is a pill. So... Given orally, then, oh, of course, the, yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is Maxwell. This is my black lab. Um, I've had, I had him for 13 years, and in 2009, he had very severe allergies is what we thought it was. We took him to numerous vets, spent, I think my mom calculated up to around $10,000, okay. doing test after test after test. He had the flaky dry skin. You can kind of see here is when it was starting. Um, he and, doesn't look happy. No, and he doesn't, and it was sad. Um, and he had a foul odor from his skin, so you could, it, it literally smelled like he was decaying. Mm -hmm. Like decaying from the outside in. It was probably the most disgusting thing I'd ever smelled in my life, and it was so pitiful because he would just lay there up at the top of our stairs and not move for days. Now when did the <coughs> smell start? Cause you're, um, that was the first thing we noticed. Okay, so we're talking about, you started noticing symptoms in 2009, mm -hmm. but it wasn't diagnosed correctly yeah, so, for a moment, so that doesn't yeah. sound very good. What happened was we had him for two years, did numerous tests, we took him to like three different vets, and we had horses at the same time. So we had a new vet come out because our old equine vet had passed away and she came out and took one look at him and goes I know what's wrong with your dog can I take a sample of his blood for free I won't charge you she took it back called us within two hours of her returning back to the vet's hospital and she goes your dog's uh, thyroid levels are under 0.5 um, and this is all from her notes like her vet notes so she started him out with 40 milligrams of depo which is a steroid um, she put him on two milliliters of lime and sulfa and it's a bath and it's supposed to help with the skin also along with the depo and um, she put him on thyroxine, and she started him out at 0.8 milligrams once a day. So 
Oh, and this, this now, is what time is this? What was the, when was the first round of medicine started? In 2011 when he was okay. diagnosed. So, so he had already had it two years. Yeah, I want to go back to the two years because I, this dog is suffering for two years. <laughs> we almost put him down and it's mm -hmm. like, it took us everything because we put him on steroids. One vet was like, he just has severe allergies. So we put him on steroids and it managed it a little bit better, but it never like, so like we kept taking him to the vet and kept taking him to the vet and like on the steroids he seemed a little bit better and we're like okay it's working and then all of a sudden it go back down mm -hmm. so now we is this thought the it same just... vet repeatedly yeah um no we took him to one in springfield illinois which is where i'm from we took him to one in edinburgh which is a little bit <coughs> southern we took him up north to one mm -hmm. and this is actually a small town vet that finally noticed it and they're like yeah we know what's wrong with your dog within seeing him for five minutes wow yeah so like she literally just walked in and was like, hey, your dog has a, this issue. And we're like, what? She's like, yeah. So um, so what happened? So this is him after treatment. He looks happier. Yeah, he's my baby. So um, his T4 levels increased to over 0.5 is what that's supposed to say. And they kept him at uh, 0.8 thyroxine levels, but they increased it to twice a day. He kept getting depo, but that stopped after two years. And he still did get sulfa and lime um, baths, and they increased that. Um, his final thyroid levels after eight, uh, six months of treatment were 2.5. So when she saw, she was like, your dog's levels, like, you're lucky he's not dead, um, pretty much. And uh, he was put on NSAIDs after two years because, after his two years of treatments, because his weak muscles caused him to have hip problems. And that also came from the fact that he constantly laid on one side of his body. Um, and his hair regrowth and odor and skin irritation were gone within six months. Okay, now I got a question. When she said you're lucky your dog didn't die, was that because of the low levels? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, the because of how low. Yeah, they said literally. Or less than 0.5. Yeah, they said the only thing that was keeping him like alive was the steroid shots because it was helping him manage his pain. Okay. Um, but uh, when we, because we had to put him down two years ago, this January will be two years ago. Um, because it's a lifelong treatment, like it doesn't affect him or anything, but because they said he went so long without the medicine, because you know other doctors weren't mm -hmm. doing anything, uh, when he passed away, they said it was like a lot of symptoms from his thyroid. So when he came downstairs, because he had really bad arthritis, as it was too, with his hip problems, which was why he was on incense. He came downstairs and we had been contemplating. I was like, okay, we'll do it and I'll pay for it, mom, because it's to that point, you know, you don't like to see your dog suffer. He couldn't like withhold any of his bowels anymore. Like he couldn't do anything, and he just looked like he was sick all over again from the beginning. And they came out and put him down, and they're like, his thyroid levels were so low it wasn't like oh, okay. anything. Yeah. Now, yeah. how old was he when he? He was 13. Okay. So I mean, it wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean. It's That's sad, pretty but... close to the end anyway for mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So. Dog, so. Yeah. So like his success. Okay. That's Max. Nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Oh, yeah. That's him right there oh, after really? treatment. So I mean, and uh -huh. this is him being like 12 years old. Yeah, he's enjoying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a success finally. Yes. It's just kind of it was disheartening hard. to have mm -hmm. to go through that much to finally diagnose hypothyroidism because dogs go hypo, cats go hyper. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that would have been so hard. Oh, and uh, <laughs> treatment wise. When for the first eight months of treatment, he had to go in monthly, and then she had him come in like three times a year to double check his thyroid levels. And I was allowed to give him off his steroid medicine. Okay. So we didn't have to take him in for any right. of that. Okay. So one and one little endocrinology thing. T4 refers to the thyroid hormone. It's got four iodine molecules. It's also called thyroxine. Is T4, but it's not the biologically active molecule in the body. T4 is changed to T3, and that's triiodothyronine, and that's the hormone that does the work. So T4 is kind of like the reserve or the at bat, but it gets changed to T3, and, but it's more <coughs> stable, so that's why you give T4, it's changed into T3 rather than giving T3. Questions, comments? I kind of have a question for that though. Do they have a medicine that's T3 or just because it's not as stable they don't do it? I doubt it because there'd be, I, don't, I doubt if there'd be any reason to have a T3. 
You know what I mean? Because T4 has changed to T3. Uh, she sent me, yeah, she sent me notes from her vet yeah, yeah, book that yeah. she has there, and it said the only form of treatment yeah, was a T4 Yeah, because there wouldn't be any because reason. Because they create, it helps to create storage for the T4. Yeah, yeah, it's in reserve, so if T3 gets low, they already got some T4 there to be converted. So, good questions. Good, good case history.